Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining the most recent webinar in the Dataversity Monthly Series, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy with Dr. Wendy Lynch. This series is held the first Thursday of every month and today Wendy will be joined by Jamie DePistino and Mark Horseman to discuss quantifying the value of data literacy. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, Zoom defaults to chat to send you just the panelists, but you may also change that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A section. And to find the chat and the Q&A panels, you can click those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. And let me introduce to you our guest speakers. Jamie is the Data Governance Manager and Computing Services at Carnegie Mellon University. She works with leaders to establish and operate an evolving collaboration of data stewards, data consumers, and, and analysts to enable data sharing and analytics for the institution with the ultimate goal of supporting business leaders in using data to make decisions and analyze performance. She is responsible for leading, planning, and facilitating the data governance and data service programs for the university. Mark is a data management professional and CDMP practitioner with over 20 years of experience and is a data evangelist at Dataversity. Mark moved into data quality, master data management, and data governance early in his career and has been working extensively in data management since the early 2000s. Previous to his work at Dataversity, Mark led information management initiatives in both private and public sector organizations. And with that, and let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Dr. Wendy Lynch. For over 35 years, Wendy has converted complex analytics into business value as a sense maker and analytic translator. A talented researcher and consultant to numerous Fortune 100 companies, startups, and healthcare giants, her own work has focused on the application of big data solutions in health and human capital management. An author of books on effective communication and analytics, Wendy has pioneered the only structured system to empower a new generation of professionals who will revolutionize the successful application of data to solve business challenges. Those tra these trained analytic translators allow companies to convert analytic, advanced analytics into actionable solutions, building a sustainable alliance between analytic and, professional, and business professionals. And with that, I'm gonna give the floor to Wendy to get this presentation and discussion started. Wendy, hello and welcome. Hello to you, Shannon, how are you doing? Amazing, thank you. Good. Very <laughs> good, very good. Well, I will um, be bringing our guests uh, from the panel in just a few minutes. And to begin, I'm going to just walk through some ways of thinking about data literacy and its value. So the first question we can ask ourselves is, who are we talking about when we are thinking about value? And I'm going to divide it up into three different stakeholder groups. The first one being the individuals themselves. So when we think about literacy, too often what we see is what we lose because of not having data literacy. And according to Accenture, and I thought this was an interesting number, Companies lose more than 43 hours per employee per year due to data-induced procrastination and sick leave, specifically from the stress of information um, or technology or data overload. So we are seeing people feeling overwhelmed and stressed by data. But then on the plus side, what we find is that students who become data literate as they're going through school will earn in their careers 20% more than their peers, specifically because they bring value to an organization. If we think further about individuals, employees who are data literate, actually in some articles say that they are happier they are less likely to quit their organization. And that's specifically because they have a higher level of competence. And so they feel more secure and they feel better suited for the job that they have. 
So if we think about the individual level value, we can say that by somebody being literate or aware or fluent, that they will be happier, more self-confident, less stressed, more productive, and they're gonna earn more. So it's a pretty solid list for the individual. Now let's think about it from the standpoint of what happens when a person is or is not literate. So there are some reports that three quarters of employees report feeling overwhelmed or unhappy when they are having to work with data. Another saying that a third of, of employees said they would try and find another way to do something so that they wouldn't have to use data. And 14% said they would avoid doing the task altogether. So we start to see that there's procrastination, there is avoidance, there is um, inefficiencies because somebody is trying to do something without having to use the tools at their disposal. If we think about all of the things that can happen within a team, let's say, data literacy training improves self-confidence, but it also leads to more confident decision-making. And this is a topic that comes up a lot when you read reviews, that functionally we are limited when individuals don't know how to grasp data and use data. So we see that the big factors are decision-making, innovation, burnout, and customer experience. So if we think about functionally what happens within an organization on a day-to-day -day basis when the workforce does or does not have data skills, we're talking about this functional value, being able to apply data in ways that make decisions better and faster, that improve innovation, that help with the discovery of new insights and allow teams to be even more productive. So that's an individual level and then a functional level across the people within an organization. And then lastly, what we see is a lot of information that I'm looking forward to exploring with our panel members. So Cap Gemini, for example, says that if a company has the behaviors, so that functional people and processes that support the use of data, and then also the technology and tools to best use that information. What they say is that um, three quarters almost of companies are really down here, not using data that well. But of that small portion who are dealing with data really well and who have aligned their people, processes, technology, and tools, they claim that those organizations have 70% higher revenue per employee. And this isn't an unusual headline. We see even in HR literature and management literature saying that companies that have high levels of data literacy have as much as an 82% higher profit over a three year period compared to companies that don't have high maturity in the way that they use data. And when we see all of the different publications, we see big numbers. $500 million opportunity for companies. $2 billion a year. That's how much the median Fortune 1000 company would boost revenue by if it increased the usability of data it already has by just 10%. These are big numbers 
which equates to almost $56,000 additional sales per employee per year. We see numbers like this, that organizations who are primarily data-driven have 5% higher productivity and 6% higher profits compared to companies that are not data-driven. And an organization with data literacy levels that are in the top third see three to 5% increase in market capitalization. So when we're talking at the enterprise level, at this overarching capability, we start to see huge numbers. And so when you can capitalize on all of that coordinated use of data, then we actually are producing this amazing set of outcomes. So this is the way that I thought I would tee it up for our guests. And just to be thinking about that, we can think about individual level value, functional level values, what I'll call it, and then enterprise level value, which is more revenue, more profitable, lower overhead, lower turnover. So I will now turn it over to our lovely panel. Hello, Mark. Hello, Jamie. Hello. Howdy. Great. So I thought I would start with just a high level question to give us a sense of how you think about this. And I thought we could use an analogy. And that analogy is if data literacy is a means of transportation, taking us to a particular destination, what kind of transportation would it be and where is it taking you? And I'll start with best case scenario. What do you see that data literacy is, how is it taking us and where is it taking us? I'll go ahead and start with you, Mark. Yeah, best case, um... As you know, I'm a I'm a I've turned myself into a little bit of a car nut for or in the last few years. Um, so I, I like to drive a, a Mustang now, and it has uh, a lot of self driving features uh, that assist me in where I'm going. So um, it, it's wonderful to just drive around and and kind of uh, look at where I'm going, and curiosity. Uh, can take over and and uh, and we can cruise through data, and it's wonderful to uh, take put the roof down and bring people along on that journey. So, um, what I like to do is, and and I've always loved to do this in my career is is work with people on an individual level and have that personal touch with folks and and go around and have coffee and talk data, and and um, talk about everybody's responsibility with data and what they're doing with data and are you struggling with data? How can we help and and go on that adventure? So uh, that would be my best case scenario uh, type uh, ad adventure with somebody on an individual level. Awesome. So it is a a personal Mustang adventure Thanks. with Mark. <laughs> and you're on your way to curiosity and and uh, discovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Jamie, what's your best case scenario? So yeah, thank you, Wendy. Uh, for me, I I was thinking about trains this past weekend. My uh, boyfriend's son is very was very much into Thomas the Tank Engine, and so a lot of my, my uh, analogy has to deal with the bullet train. And thinking about it speeding down, it's smooth, it's flawless, and you're going really fast into Insight Valley, you know, going through beautiful mountain towns and all of all of the wonderful data with you. But it's a it's a smooth, easy, fast ride. And for me, my my where I work at uh, at Carnegie Mellon, where our data is very federated. So one of the things that I want to be able to enable our, our business partners to be able to do is to take the data that they need, democratize it, you know, make them be able to get what they need to do what they need to do for their business outcomes and their business purposes. And I want it to be just as smooth as that bullet train that they're able to take that and run with it. 
Um, so that's what what immediately came to mind in my best best case scenario. All right. Well, I like it being smooth and fast, and I, I think Insight Valley would be a very nice place to be. I, I do like that. I do like that. So, um, Jamie, let's turn the tables and say when data literacy efforts are not going well, what would be the kind of transportation and the destination you might end up in? Yeah, thanks again, Wendy. And I'm going back to my trains and I'm I immediately, when, when I thought about this question, I thought about the little engine that could, right? So we're <laughs> chugging up along the mountain. We're really trying to get to, to where we need to go. And it is such a struggle and we're pushing forward and we're trying so hard and eventually we might get to the top of that mountain. But a lot of times we feel like Sisyphus where we're rolling that rock up and just only for it to come back down again. Um, you know, it's it's a very painful process. Uh, you're working with somebody to try to help them meet their, their goals, meet their needs, but maybe things aren't as as clear as you would you would hope. Helping them to have to work with others so they have a better understanding and try to bring them up to speed on that data literacy. Um, and it, it could be painful and it could be it could take a, a long time. And uh, you want to try to make that as easy for people as you can, but Worst case, I've, and I've seen it happen where you're just constantly pushing and you're going up the track going, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And eventually you make it to the top of the mountain, but it's taken a heck of a lot of effort to get there. Yeah, I think we've all been aboard that train and uh, we just hope that we have enough coal or or <laughs> or fuel to keep it going. That's right. So, yeah. So, Mark, what's your worst case? Well, I, I've, um, I, and I'm sure this will resonate with many people in the audience. I've been at many organizations that want to just reinvent the wheel from scratch. And congratulations, you're a team of one. Now go make thing and go fix thing, go fix data literacy. So my worst case scenario is a penny farthing bicycle. Because why would you have two wheels of equal size when they you could have one comically small and one comically large wheel uh, that you almost need help getting onto the bicycle with? And that bicycle, to quote Robert Frost, is going on the path less traveled by. You have no idea what you're going to run into, and, and it turns into a real good luck buddy situation. All right. So somebody who is perilously unbalanced on a contraption they may not even know how to ride very well yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so that's where we are folks we're starting with somewhere between a wobbly bike and a little engine that maybe could and maybe couldn't or we are all the way to a smooth bullet train ride heading to insight valley or a personal top-down Mustang cruise to curiosity and discovery. So now that we kind of have the beginning and the end, the low points and the high points, let's talk a little bit more and have you give some context of what experiences have you had? And I don't mean all, I don't need a total list of all experiences you've ever had, but what experience do you have specifically in literacy? And can you share one best example of proven value? And you can choose at an individual level, a functional level or an enterprise level. So Mark, why don't you start again? Yeah. So uh, at one organization I worked at uh, a couple of years ago now, um, they were going through uh, some some deep budget cuts. And so they started a financial sustainability initiative. And this was a wonderful thing to attach some data literacy to and some data governance to. Uh, so what we had done as part of a team is implemented a uh, a stamp of sorts. And so what this stamp was, it was like a bronze, silver, gold, platinum stamp, uh, but people could click on it. And uh, 
and so we just we started putting them on it and the the stamp you click on it you get information about the report you get definitions about what the data means you get a an understanding of of uh, where the data came from and is it following the best practices at our organization so there was some little data literacy nuggets in there along with links to the business glossary um, so we just launched that. We didn't really tell anybody what it meant, but as soon as people started, our executive team were, were looking at financial sustainability metrics. We had these on all of them and they got curious and were like, why is this one bronze? Why is this one silver? Why is this one gold? And, uh, and we exclaimed to them, well, you can click on that and you can see why it got the grade that it got and why it got the medal that it got. Oh, okay. And so they're, the executives started reading through this and uh, and somebody said, well, oh, this one doesn't follow all your data quality rules. Uh, oh, this one, the, the, the definitions aren't, uh, aren't complete for this report. And then an executive said, I want all of these to be gold level reports. And so then we started getting a lot of buy-in to improve literacy uh, from both the data team side and the executive team side, which was uh, fascinating. And I see in chat, how are you grading it again? It, that's a process we can get into in at another webinar. But uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was a, a wonderful thing that we did. And and it really kind of brought the executive team to an understanding of what went into the content that they were viewing. Got it. So that was an example where you actually achieved a level of interest based on how well um, those reports had been curated and produced. Exactly. And, and that all went into decision quality for yeah. keeping that organization afloat during difficult times. That's great. Great. So Jamie, um, share an experience that you've had and uh, where you demonstrated value. Yeah, absolutely. I think, thank you, Wendy, for asking. Um, one of the, so I, just as a preface to the conversation, I just wanted to let everyone know I've been at the university for 16 and a half years and I've been in this role for about four years. And I came out of the registrar's office space um, where we did a lot of work with our student uh, data warehouse. And I used to conduct a lot of trainings and teach people about the data that was in our, our data warehouse. Uh, well, as, as being a data governance manager now, I'm working on Im implementing a data or an enterprise-wide uh, data literacy program um, along with some other data training too. And I've conducted some research. I've done some uh, data literacy maturity assessments. If anybody wants to talk about that in a separate webinar, we, we certainly can. Uh, with scorecard creation. But I have to say, I think one of the most impactful uses of data that I have seen to date is, is actually came out of our institutional research and analysis uh, department or office. Uh, Mark, I know you'll be happy to hear that. Um, right now, they're working on a student success algorithm. And this isn't uh, uncommon. A lot of schools are currently working on, on, on them on their own. Uh, but this, but what really impressed me the most about the data that I'm on the steering committee for this, what really impressed me the most about the data being used is that it isn't just about what a student's midterm grades are, what a student's final grades are, what a, how many times the student has gone to the tutoring center. You would think about those kind of things as being really basic to say, to put up a flag in your algorithm to say, oh, you know what, this student may need an intervention here at midterm, they haven't been to the tutoring center and they have a D or an F, right? So it's, it, but, but to also incorporate other aspects of that student's uh, experience at the university, things like card swipe data for visiting the gym, right? So is, is that it, it contributing to a student's, student's success because they're able then to work off the stress that they have, they're doing, it's a healthy habit. Um, you know, those sorts of things. So this model is, is above and beyond uh, what what uh, had been done in the past. And I'm really excited to see where it goes in the future, especially as it's looking at a more holistic picture of, a, of the student. And you wouldn't be able to do that without having a really, really good uh, literacy in the data uh, that we have across the university. So 
Okay, so say a little bit more about <clears throat> the value that that um, really cool set of of metrics all going into one way or a, a sort of a global indicator of how they're doing. So um, where, where would you see the individual value of that data literacy effort? The individual value absolutely is, is going to be for the student. Um, the student won't, if the, if there's an inter intervention that's needed and it's it's done early enough, that student won't have to retake classes and it won't cost them more money, right? Um, right. So like, if you think about it, the value for them is, is it's very, it's not, it's, it's the monetary value and being able to maybe complete their degree on time. For the enterprise, it's also really important because we don't want a student to drop out, right? And this is, I think I could speak for any higher ed, ed institution when I say this, you don't want your students to drop out because that's a revenue loss, right? That's one yeah. less student that's going to be participating in things in the future or you know, be paying tuition or paying room and board. So you wanna try to retain those students as best as you can and meet their needs so that you're able to, to you know, not lose that revenue. So it, I think it benefits both sides. Got it. Oh, that's a really great example. Thank you. So the next question is um, from the work that you've done with companies or I guess organizations that will include um, institutions like Carnegie Mellon, how well um, do you think organizations measure the value of their data literacy efforts today. So um, I'll start with you, Jamie. I, I would, in, in my opinion, I don't think that they, that at least at higher ed organizations, and I will make an assumption and kind of move this over to companies that they probably don't do it very well. And I think a lot of that is, you know, you have to dig harder to find that value. It's really easy to say, okay, here's a basic metrics, right? I can, do here's the percentage who did training and here's the the percentage who did x y and z but to actually measure the impact <laughs> excuse me of data literacy i think is really hard and to take a look at what have you been what insights have you been able to generate what data informed decisions have you been able to do because you are now data literate right to show that value to the enterprise i think it's really hard to tell <laughs> excuse me um, you know, and it's just not easy. But I think the pro the the issue is is not just looking at the quantitative data, again that comes out of data literacy. But what about the qualitative data? What about the stories? We talk about data storytelling all the time, right? But what about looking at it on a, a little bit of a flip side? Tell me about the story, that the human story, and how you've been able to add to the business outcome. Tell me how this has been impactful for you and your job and made things better for you because you were more data literate. And that's more difficult to capture without actually going and interviewing people or having those conversations. So I think, right. so I don't think it's measured as much because it takes a lot more effort. Right, right. So in your experience, there is an awareness that it's important and there may be a few metrics about participation, but not necessarily um, the full translation of what that means. Exactly. And they don't do it as well because it's not an easy thing to measure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so so Mark, what about you? Um, what's, what is your sense of how well companies actually document or quantify the value of data literacy. Yeah, and I, I really like how Jamie put this. Um, one thing I would add to to what Jamie explained was uh, is his consistency. I, I think that's the biggest challenge that I've run into is that, hey, we may do a really good job of, of showing literacy and proving literacy and proving value out of that literacy for this particular endeavor. Uh, but in heavily siloed organizations, uh, you don't just have the power to 
say, okay, now go measure your literacy following the same way that we did it over here in this silo of the organization. You can get there, but it takes a lot of effort. What I see so many times though is, is, hey, we're doing this, we're doing this. This is how we're showing value. This is how we're showing value. This is how we're showing value. So I, I see that um, uh, lack of consistency across an organization. Got it. So it's not that nobody does any measurement. It's just that we don't have a, a, uh, a template really to follow. Mm -hmm. That could be a good to... segue to your next question, Wendy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, now that you mention it. So what gets in the way? What gets in the way? And I'll let you start, Mark. Yeah. So, and like I said, a good segue, because I don't think every situation or every silo or every executive understands the value of assessing value, <laughs> especially <laughs> when you start talking about data. So why do we need to talk about data literacy? And I right. think it almost needs to be couched in, in different terms or expressed in a different way that doesn't speak to literacy at all. But are you getting the value you need to get out of this content? Are you trusting it? Is it what you wanted in the first place? Is it meeting your expectations? Did the data folks actually understand what the heck you wanted and provide you what you needed? So I, I think that assessment is um, just getting the traction to buy into that is challenging and not, again, consistent across an organization. Right, right. And so what it, and it's a little nuanced here, because I think it's hard not to start to ask questions about the value of well governed, well defined, well um, used data. Mm -hmm. um, that is one question. And I think our question here is training people to recognize, uh, first of all, what types of data are available. Second exactly. of all, whether those data are in a format that is valid and reliable. Um, well, and and like so you can lead a horse to water, but can you make them drink? And it's like you can lead somebody to data literacy knowledge, but can you make them consume that? Uh, right. Is there a desire to, to learn? Is, is exactly. there a, a perceived value in learning that uh, that knowledge and i think that's the the biggest challenge yeah and it's kind of a chicken and egg right? like mm -hmm. you want people to understand what to ask for to assess whether data are reliable but if your data aren't reliable then how does literacy actually help them um so uh, so jamie weigh in from your experience w w um what gets in the way that you see of assessing the value of literacy yeah thanks and it, it's it's funny i had this the same the the absolute same thoughts mark about you know there isn't a lack of standardization for tools or benchmarks to assess value and being coming from a very federated organization that makes it extremely difficult and even competency frameworks measurement tools like they they vary so widely and don't always cover the data literacy literacy skills that you really want to capture but the bottom line, the thing that I think about the most too is how are we defining value? And how are we defining value culturally across the organization, right? Because that can vary. So what does it mean to be value? What does data literacy mean in your organization? It may mean something culturally different in mine uh, versus yours. And so how do we how do we reconcile that? Right. So, and again, I think part of the challenge too is that we look for the quick and easy, that the quantitative numbers, you know, the numbers, the the statistics that are easy to pull, but we don't often go to that human story. Um, we're not tying things to the business outcomes. Uh, we're not looking at things, everything from our organizational cultural lens too. And I think that it just becomes so muddy and so tricky that it becomes just so difficult to really start assessing that value. But I think one of the first steps is to really agreeing within your organization, what is value and what is data literacy? And I noticed somebody put that in the chat too and asked us what our definition of data literacy is. And I think, I think that's just really important before you even start assessing anything to make sure that there's a clear understanding of what you're actually assessing. 
Right, right. And as you point out, it's in it could be tailored to each organization and maybe even tailored to each job when you think about it, because success in data literacy for somebody who is working immersed in data all day might be different than what we want from the executive level in terms of what they're able to do. Exactly. So let's just get into um, the individual level um, versus the enterprise level. And we've talked about this a little bit and I hear you on Jamie about individual stories and having people explain how it has transformed either their job or their ability to um, use data in their area. But have you seen, either of you seen actual measurements um, of, in, of what individuals gain from being literate? Um, let's start with you, Jamie. So I would say I, I haven't seen like individual, individual, I can't, um, I, my apologies, individual um, measurements, uh, but I've heard stories about impacts of having data literacy and how that's impacted jobs. Um, the one thing I was going to recommend, and I, and I have done a, a data literacy uh, maturity assessment. I've done it at the enterprise level, and I'm going to be working to do one at the individual level too. Um, which I think really does tell your story about, you know, what areas at your organization maybe need a little more help than others. Um, you know, where can you best provide your the support and the services where they're going to be needed to make the most impact for your organization? Um, but one thing I wanted to recommend to those who are, are listening on our webinar today is really when if you start to, to conduct data literacy training, uh, to really do a pre-assessment and a post-assessment so that you can measure not only the effectiveness of, of your training, but the impact or the the measure of of, of the value for that individual um, as they become more, more data literate. It really will help you. Um, and taking a look at that to say, hi, hey, how can I tie this to the business outcomes that they've had, right? So I see that, that <laughs> excuse me, Joan, um, she had a score of five and now she's at an eight. And how does that make help her to do her job better? And how does that help then the functions of, of, of the organization? Then how does that help the enterprise? I, I would argue that it's all interconnected and that the more individual success you have, the more enterprise-wide success you'll have. Got it. Yeah, I guess um, if you have a instrument that you... Um, would recommend we can post that uh, for our listeners. I've seen such variation in those types of assessments, everything from the data abilities, people who have six levels of, you know, 20 different skills um, down to some very basic applied questions on interpreting graphs or interpreting um, word problems that had to do with data. So um, I, I welcome you uh, either commenting now if you have one, Jamie, or, uh, or letting us know which test you might love to have people use pre and post. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The pre and post ones that are, would be something that I would develop my on my own, depending on my de depending upon the training um uh but i would think of it more and depending upon our culture but i would think of it more as a you know what what did you learn what didn't you what you know i, I could probably come up with something really pretty general that i could share with everyone um as far as the data the data literacy maturity assessment there's a ton out there the one that I used uh, here, um, I will be honest, I won't say the name of it, but I was not particularly thrilled with it. Um, so I'm still inve investigating other op other uh, opportunities. But again, it's all about finding what, what fits best for your organization and makes the most sense culturally for you. Got it. So Mark, what about you? Um, what ideas and suggestions do you have 
for measuring value at the individual and or enterprise level. I like approaching this from like a OKR perspective, that's observations and key results. And so I like to look at what do I observe about individuals and what do I observe about the enterprise uh, when it comes to the value of, of literacy. So at an individual level, I want to see people have more comfort and trust in the content that they're consuming. At an enterprise level, I want to see risk reduction and improved decision accuracy. So are we making the right decision? Are we keeping the right retail location open? Are we closing the, the, uh, the right retail location because of it, it's because it's not performing? Is an individual stressed out when they get a report or are they happy to get a report? Are they confused about the content or are they clear about the content? So I, I like to look at it from that, that perspective because that, that feels more tangible to me. Okay. Um, the one thing that I struggle with that I've tried before and it kind of uh, speaks to what Jamie uh, talked about is if we do like a self-assessment of literacy at an individual level uh, and then do some training and then do a self-assessment of literacy of that person again, um, I've often seen the score go down after training uh, because the individual has learned how much they don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that absolutely can happen. Yeah. Where <clears throat> you, you did you self-rated yourself as being quite confident. And then now you found out that you um, you don't know anything at at all. all. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but it's interesting because you sort of went to the functional level. Mm -hmm. If you think about the levels that I described at the beginning, which is, are they making good decisions and are they using data to make those decisions? And are they more comfortable making those decisions? And Mm -hmm again, we'll have to have a methodology for um, figuring out whether the decision was quote unquote right or wrong. Um, So, yeah. So um, this came up um, in a couple of the comments here. Um, And it could go either way. So in your opinion, Do business leaders um, have a particular idea about what the value of data literacy will be that differs from what the actual value would be? So are they overvaluing, undervaluing um, what data literacy could do? Um, What what is your um, opinion, Mark? I might tee up for this one a little bit, Wendy. So I think business leaders think that the data folks will understand the requirements of the content that they need to consume for Mm decision-making. But I think the actual value is that uh, they have a a broader sense of what it means to ask questions. Yeah. For, for a quick answer. And, and so that disconnect is, Hey, I didn't ask, uh, and you, you and you and I get into this every once in a while, Wendy, so you can laugh yeah. at me. You didn't ask a literate question is what I, when I was a data person, I yes. used to say to executives and yes. they'd laugh at me, but it's a terrible way to phrase that, by the way, don't ever say that <laughs> to your executive. Uh, but that's the, the disconnect, right? It's, it's, right. I don't understand what you're asking. You don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, as you know, that's um, my whole focus. Yeah, that's why I said I'm I'm kind of teeing you up for that one. (laughs) Yes. Well, yeah. And thank you um, for putting my book on the book of the month club. But um, (laughs) you're most. But I think I think that's a great observation is that business leaders may think that um, data literacy is going to involve people other than them to get them, quote unquote, the right answer. And uh, too often the disconnect is that neither of them know how to talk to each other. So, um, so there, that's a whole different level of, of disconnect. So Jamie, what is, what is your impression? Like, it sounds like you work with organizations a lot and I just am curious, is it the executive that comes and says, I really need my people to do this? Or is it a people who come to you and say, my God, our company needs help? So yeah, yeah. Thanks, Wendy. A lot of this is coming in internal here, uh, where I need to be. I need to be able to do X, Y, Z, and 
you know, you, executives might have perceptions of, you know, data literacy is going to give us enhanced decision making and increased efficiency and We'll, we'll, we'll be, be able to innovate and we'll be able to save have cost savings. And that's true of all of all of those things are very much true. But the disconnect, I think, happens on, you know, where executives overestimate like the immediate impact. You know, it's going to take time for cultural change. It's going to take time for that training to be implemented. Um, you know, it's you have to have that data driven culture to be able to move things forward. Uh, there could be a disconnect between the expectation of of having dated literacy and the actual tools and resources that are available too. Um, you know, not everybody may have access to the tools that they need to be able to do those innovations or find those insights that everyone's looking for. So I think that's a, a disconnect there. Um, there's also going to be a need for ongoing education and support uh, to maintain and enhance those data literacy skills as things change over time. So it's yeah. a, not a one and done, it's a continuous investment. Uh, and I, I don't think executives see that all the time either. Uh, and you know, the um, one last thing I just wanna mention too is that integrating data literacy into your into the daily operations, just like data governance, can be complex, it can be time consuming, you have to change the culture, uh, and you have to be prepared to have to, to run the marathon and not the sprint, right? All of right. these things take time to put into place. And a lot of our executives think it could be done overnight. And so I think there's a, a lot of disconnect with, when it comes to the time frame of when they're actually going to see those, those insights generated from data literacy. Got it. So it's not just a disconnect on what the value will be, but it's a disconnect about what the effort will take and a disconnect about how long it will take. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That sounds a little more like the little engine that could, I will tell you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this also just came up in the chat. Um, you know, we're getting closer and closer to um, uh voice, not just voice to text, but voice to query. And we're getting closer and closer to having uh, a lot of the analysis done for us. Um, I think that there's really uh, very different sides of this question. Do we really need people to learn about data literacy? Um, if we are gonna have these capabilities. Um, what is your opinion, Jamie? I was about to say, ooh, ooh, pick me, pick me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Wendy. Uh, with AI, I think it's important not to think about um, necessarily the inputs that individuals are putting into AI, but how AI is built from data, right? Um, so data is used and metadata is used to create all of our the the LLMs and all of the algorithms and machine learning that feeds our feeds AI. So you have to also think about it from that lens. So you want to make sure that you, you have to have data literacy to understand that make sure that the right data is going in the model first. You also want to make sure that it's not that the the data has has really good quality and you have to be data literate to be to understand if there's a data quality issue. And, and you know if there's any cleansing that needs to be done. So it's really important if you're looking at it holistically. If you're building AI models or helping your organizations helping to to build AI models, you really have to to be data literate to enable that. And you know, and I I think I saw somebody in the chat mention the props. I mean, it's all it's garbage in, garbage out, right? So even that's true with the data and the underlying model. You want to make sure that, you know, it, it's still really important to understand what you're asking for. It's understand to, it's important to understand what data is actually in the model um, in order to be to be for it to be helpful, helpful. Otherwise, it's useless. There's going to be bias and there's going to be errors and there's going to be wrong interpretations. Yes. Yes. So your points are that even if there is a capability out there that says, yes, we have the ability to use a natural language question to run a query and get an answer, 
we still should be aware enough about how any of those AI tools uh, were created and on what databases um, they were trained. Yeah, and yep. we should be able to assess at least the basic face validity of what we're getting back and know whether it's actually querying in the way that we need it to. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to be able to interpret those answers too, right? Right. right. So I think that it's vitally important, but yeah, yeah. Thank you, Wendy. Yes. So Mark, what about, what about you? Um, the, the, there's a lot of wonderful comments in chat. So if, if people are looking at chat, just, I mean, whew, so, so, so many great opinions there. I, I think there's a lot of power and danger in this. Um, I, I know a lot about AI. I've been in AI since the 90s. Um, what I see with natural language processing uh, versus how it takes that natural language and queries a, a, an engine or queries your data to, to find an answer for that um there's still a disconnect there and what somebody said in chat the the need for literacy is more important than ever so true um the ability for ai to write garbage looking queries to produce results that look good it makes things that look good that's what it does uh so if you're not looking at an answer and and understanding how to read write and argue with it <laughs> then um you might not uh, be getting something that's of high quality. So I think over time, this will get better uh, as, as AI becomes more human fluent than it is now. Uh, but the, the danger level is so high. And I think the only way that, that you can overcome that is by uh, implementing something that they call a small language model, where it's just trained on exactly what your organization does. So that said, something like that is gonna take way more effort and engagement and person power than, than people can uh, appreciate right now. You don't wanna have like a dozen people spending a whole year in the dark working on some AI thing. Um, and then an executive saying, but I punched it into chat GPT and look what the answer it gave me and then go into an argument for a month as to why that's wrong and not very useful. So uh, there's, there's a lot of power, but there's a lot of danger. And I think it's too soon just to sum up my thoughts. Yeah, I, I agree with you on, on all of this. And I, I happen to be in violent agreement with you both that uh, AI does not displace the need for more people who know how to interpret and uh, understand yeah, what, somebody was what we're asking for and what we're getting. I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and they kept bringing it back to human in the loop. Where's the human in the loop of yeah. this? And and yeah. and which is a term that we use in AI, and I think that's very critical in in this use case as well. Yeah, yeah, this is great. So we have a few extra minutes to take questions from the um, from the audience. Um, do you want to take that, um, Shannon? Sure. Yeah. Thank you all so much for this amazing conversation. Uh, just to answer the most commonly asked question, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day uh, Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and recording. Diving in here, lots of great questions coming in. Um, so I think focusing on ROI for data literacy training is so incredibly difficult. Do organizations measure the ROI of training for other operational aspects like processing accurate expenses, expense claims, training on how to use Excel, following SPs, et cetera? Data literacy training should be seen as a core to functioning within the organization like those other things. Does that make sense? Um, Mark, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, well, I'll pass it to Jamie real quick, because I know Jamie's got some good opinions on this. I, I think, uh, again, that biggest challenge is consistency across an organization. It's tough to get traction to get an entire organization, especially if it's heavily siloed, to all fall in line for the same kind of training and the same kind of, uh, of things. It, I wish we had the same sort of traction that the security team does about teaching people to not click on things in emails. 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I completely agree, Mark. Um, you know, trying to assess the return on investment in other areas, I think it's really a cultural question, right? What is mo what is the most valuable measurement for return on investment do your executives want or does your organization want? Um, so like, you know, I, I, her, I think Shannon mentioned Excel training and other, other types of training. Um, I, I think, and I also think it's very difficult, um, again, to, unless you're tying it to business outcomes to really come up with that return on investment. So does everyone, is everyone aware of the business outcomes? Is everyone able to tie tie what they're doing to that mission, to those the business outcomes to really show that return on investment? And that's a difficult measure to, to do. Yeah, I think that's a, a great point, Jamie, because if you don't know how your job influences the business already, then you don't know how being more data literate would make you even better at that. So without the line of sight, it's not really gonna be helpful. Perfect. Um, questions, Shannon? Yeah, yeah. And let me see if I can slip in as many as possible here. So um, what, if any, are the connections between data literacy and organizational risk management? Either of you want to take that one? It's a hard question. <laughs> there definitely is. Because I talked a little bit about decision risk as well. Um, and being able to talk about literacy in terms of decision risk is, is always really interesting for your executive team, but it doesn't necessarily flow down through the organization as nicely as you would think it would. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that's all I really have to say about that. I think that could be a whole webinar on its own too, though. Yeah, very true, Mark. Uh, what came to mind as I'm looking at this question is data retention, right? So being data literate means that you know you know you you know you're you're able to read and write and communicate about about this particular data, but you also know when the retention schedule is, right? So if we have data that's sitting out there that should no longer be retained, but it's being retained, I mean that's a that's a, a problem for the organization, right? We have packets, you know, especially if you, you're in an organization that has a federated model that sometimes maybe has systems or databases that people aren't aware of or are sitting somewhere that then could be vulnerable um, because no one's aware of what that data retention schedule should be. Um, I think that's a, 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 a good example of a tie to organizational risk management. Yeah. When, I think that's a, that's a really great know. point. Yeah. Yeah, because there's types of data that are very uh, lethal to an organization. Um, and then there's types of data that aren't. And if you don't understand which things should be kept as secure as other pieces of data, even that level of risk is there. Yeah, that's a great point. Do you think it would help an organization identify risks if people were had more uh, had, were, had some level of data literacy using it, the uh, analytics too? Yes. I mean, I, th I don't think there's any question that um, if you don't know what you are looking at in a trend or you don't know what you're looking at in comparisons or you don't know how to control for things that may be masking a phenomenon that's happening in the organization, then you might go a very long time before you perceived a threat um, to the business. Any further answer to that, Jamie or um, Mark? Go ahead, Jamie. Oh, no, I was, I was just gonna say, I think that sets <laughs> that up really well. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I do like to think that some risks transcend literacy training in that, hey, a data breach is a risk. And, and there's some base level understanding of those things in organizations now. So I don't know if, if training helps understand those better. 
um, than that base level or, or, or better enough to provide value. But you're absolutely right too, Wendy, in that for understanding and, and decision quality and de decision risk kind of things where am I closing the right retail branch? Am I terminating the right program? Am I offering the right goods and services for my customers? Like those things, I think, um, those kinds of risks um, would benefit from training. So yeah. six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yes. And I saw a comment from um, Christopher on chat that there is always an argument that data people need to have more business literacy. Business people have to have better data literacy and that that crosswalk is critical. And I'll put in one more plug for the become an analytic translator training. It's not just for analysts and it can help anybody who is having trouble between teams uh, communicate better. I agree. Oh, again, thank you all so much for this great discussion. There's so many good questions coming in. And Mark, I think you were right. We could have a whole webinar just on, on connections between risk management and data literacy. But I'm afraid that is all the time we have for today. Thanks to everybody for being so engaged in everything that we do. Again, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides uh, and links to the recording. Thanks, everybody. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Mark, for joining us. And Wendy, thank you as always. Sure. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Bye, day. Bye-bye.